and uh, an abbreviation for renewable energy and energy efficient building seminar at the ICU. And uh, um, we want to invite expert speakers in those fields, the wide field of renewable energy and energy efficient building from Japan. They can have speakers from Japan and from other countries. And uh, um, today's presentation, you may wonder how is that in relation to renewable energy? Yes, because this is a kind of foundation of wood biomass. And uh, uh, you'll learn today what astonishing resources that uh, we have in Japan. And uh, this is also the point where I get to meet uh, Professor uh, Melina Kinder. Uh, I was in uh, some way traveling to Tokyo University to the first uh, German Japan Wood uh, Biomass Energy Day at Tokyo University. And uh, she saw me <laughs> opening the pamphlet, and then I wanted to find the lecture room. And uh, so she asked me, Do you go there? And I said, oh, Yes. And so she guided me. And uh, uh, today, uh, Professor Berlinger Kimura. She is a professor at the neighboring university, Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. And she is a specialist in the nourishment cycle of plants, uh, including trees. And she has done extensive research on forests uh, in uh, Japan as well. And so she will kind of give us a tour, both through the history and the present situation of forests in Japan. And uh, at the end of the presentation, there will also be some time for asking questions. Uh, now, there's also a paper going around. Please write your name and your email address in the paper and indicate by simply yes or no on the third column if you want information about future seminars. There are, I can briefly tell you there are two more seminars already kind of planning. There is a director of forest protection in the Japanese Ministry for Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry, uh, Mr. Ikeda, and he may come and lecture the 3rd of October here. And there is uh, a manager of a geothermal power company in Iceland that provides two thirds of the energy for Iceland. And he will come and lecture 9th of October. And so that's, but more people, more seminars will come and be added. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. And so for today, uh, the topic is a uh, general overview of forestry in Japan's history and challenges. And usually, as I am in this kind of general lecture, uh, I ask, where is Japan? And I have asked it in various countries, Germany, Brazil, Japan, I have not the right answer yet. So I will try you. So, <laughs> so don't, don't hesitate, can you circle the, the uh, territory of Japan? Territory. Territory. Including sea. Oh, nice, yeah. I don't have a 
you are you're ninety percent right. You see, you are the best one till now. <laughs> so it's it's really difficult. Yeah, thank you very much for that. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's really difficult. So we actually we don't know yet the territory. This is uh, official boundary from the Japanese uh, foreign uh, ministry. But as you said, uh, here these areas are on conflict areas, and we still not sure where the boundary of Japan. But the one thing, even though there are still a lot of burning points, uh, obvious points are here. A rock, a rock in Okinawa Shima is surrounded by uh, sea ports so that it doesn't uh, sink in the sea. So it's very important to get the surrounding sea here. In the Okinawa Island, it's also nobody lives there, only some military forces are having their base here. So that one is, you made a very good choice for the surrounding territories. It's a bit difficult, but one point is to see that it's very large. And it's around 3,000 kilometers from north to, to, uh, to the south, and including those small islands, it's still Japanese, so no, even I have you have 90% right, and you have the best answer till now, but it's difficult. I also, if I don't have this basic outline, I cannot draw where the Japanese uh, territory is actually. But this one shows that it's a, actually quite long, large area we have here in Japan, there is a lot of conflict still there. And so that one is another uh, map of the um, three points that it's uh, called the continental zones and territorial uh, waters and exclusive economic zones. So there are different kind of territories in the sea. The, um, besides that, and uh, just suppose there are a lot of boundaries there, the temperature is uh, quite diverse from north to south. This one is the average temperature in the year, and this one should be dark blue, so ranging from around 2.5 in the, the northern part till 17.5. That one is, uh, as I visited uh, abroad, people from other country ask me, what's the temperature from your uh, hometown? But then, it's a uh, and the temperature, if you see the 17.5 or 2.5, it's uh, difficult to imagine. So you have to know where you come from, where your home base are, and then you can get the idea of what the average temperature is. So this one, the picture of Sapporo, it's around uh, 7.5 in average. This one, the picture of Okinawa, Okinawa so the average is 17.5. So that's uh, due to the current uh, uh, clear current, so we see uh, wave from the north and from the south, the Japanese current makes this kind of a uh, diverse temperature more warm in the southern part and in the east coast than in the northwestern part. The minimum temperature, uh, so we call it in Asahikawa, it's minus 41, and currently the highest temperature uh, recently was 40.8, but nowadays the uh, Maximum temperature, I think this one was in the 2012 uh, by uh, um, Shimanto uh, city in, Sh in, in Kochi. So every year some small uh, records are found to increase for the maximum temperature for temporary uh, maximum temperature. So we know now that in the Japan is a range of average temperature 2.5 to 17.5 with minimum possible 14, 41 to uh, plus Another specific point is the uh, precipitation. So if you are, uh, please think about your hometown or where you come from in your country, so how much water is it? So recently we had a lot of uh, hot uh, and rain events due to typhoon and very, uh, like in Hiroshima, or small, very heavy rains. And if you see the news, so how many millimeters, you need to know the meaning of the need to know what amount is this kind of millimeter. So this one shows the average in the year. So if they you say if it has rained in 24 hours more than 1,000 millimeter, means that it's around the average in a year for some regions. So you can have some image, imagine uh, how much this average means. So it has high amount in the eastern and southern eastern part and in the western northern part. 
and quite dry area here in the uh, northeast part. So the maximum and the record of the uh, maximum temperature in 10 minutes is uh, 49 millimeter. Maximum hourly uh, precipitation is 153. And maximum uh, annual and year uh, records are 800 or 5,600. So to see uh, this range uh, where it is in town in Japan, it's quite humid, so we have a lot of rain. And uh, you can see that we have also some strong events of rain. So 800 means an annual amount of rain is coming down in one day. So we really have to make this kind of, not only the number, but there is an image how much it will be for uh, the ski. In case of Futu, this average, in Futu, the average temperature in the year is around 14. And the, it's here in Mitaka may be very similar. So having some increase of temperature from January to June, July, August, the highest temperature, then going back, and actually February, January are the lowest temperature in the year. So we have two peaks of rain, one in June, it's the rainy season, and August, September, and due to the climate season. These are the basic idea where we are located, so you can see, and nowadays it's very easy to see where your hometown or everywhere in Japan, we have some uh, um, distribution of rain. So if you live here, it's very, uh, we take it for granted that in, in winter it's cold, in, August, July is high, but if you change to another region, it's quite, quite different. So it's in the tropics every, every time, it's very high temperature. In the um, um, northern region, it's very low. In the summertime, it's not so hot. So you have to make some base where you are, you know the temperature, rain, and then if you go to somewhere else, you can understand better the ecology there. So uh, last basic information of Japan are the Population. Do you know how much population Japan has now? 127 million. Yeah, million. So population density. So Japan one of the highest density country. And plus square kilometer, it's around 343 thousand per square kilometer. One of the tops uh, in Japan and in the, in the world. And actually, in Tokyo, it's about 1,000 or 1,200 per square kilometer in population density. GDP per head, it's around $34,000. And among them, agricultural part only accounts for 1.6%. So it's an industrial country with a very small, it includes forestry. So it's a very small amount comes from agriculture and forestry section. So total area, it's around uh, 376 square kilometers. And among them, uh, farmland is 30%. And actually forest area is 66.48, so almost 70%. So the average farm area for one farmer, it's a uh, one farmer has almost 1.45 hectares. So it's uh, in the case of uh, Europe, most farmers have more than uh, 40 to 100 hectares, the uh, average maybe 2,000 sometimes. In Brazil or America, it is 2,000 hectares. So the Japanese structure for agriculture is very small. The contribution to the economy is also quite small. So, and then maybe you have wondered so, in the agriculture forestry section, it's very low in the economy, only 1.6% of the total economy, but the area is 66%, almost 70%, included a plus forest area, forest plus plus farmland, farmland being 80% of the area is agriculture and forestry, but economy is just minor. So what's the reason for that? So in then, uh, actually in Tokyo, there's also uh, more than 76 76% of Tokyo prefecture is forest. So if you go to the Okutama regions, so you have you see no pasture. So they have only bears or other animals, but no human. It's even though it's very high populated, 
still to be protected as a lot of forest, and for Japan, there's also a lot of wild forest area. And the reason is the uh, slope angle of Japan. This one shows the uh, slope angle pass, uh, sorry, it should be a kilometer, meter per kilometer, meaning this will be around more than 45 degrees to the, uh, the slope angles. It's a very steep area. And you can see that a lot of area is kind of dark brown. So it means that Japanese land, this is a flat land, because the population and uh, uh, high population density are found, also in the plain areas. And on the other hand, there's a lot of steep area where everywhere is actually the forest. So you can see like this kind of scenery and the mountainside, this kind of angle like maybe 70 to 40 degrees or much, much more sometimes. Everywhere is good. And as surprisingly, even though it's a very steep angle, these are planted trees. So people go there and plant. In the past, People and the forest is a planted tree even in these hilly areas. That's why it's one of the specific points where it's a kind of high forest areas. So now, uh, some uh, overview of the Japanese ecologies. So they are around 3,000 kilometers from north to south. Now this angle I just went around, so this one is north. And it is separated into ecosystems, so the subtropic area and the um, uh, low, uh, low level forest area, and the evergreen forest area in the uh, sub um, alpinal area, and alpinal area in the very high altitude or in the northern areas. And these are in the uh, uh, deciduous forest trees, like oak or in the secondary forest. This kind of uh, forest. So here in Japan, there are five uh, ecological zones. And there are some image about those ones. I show you some examples from south to north about the ecosystems. So, firstly, uh, starting in the Okinawa in the subtropical Yambaru regions, it's a sub subtropical jungle. And they have a three uh, farm uh, area with mangrove and other. Uh, tropical uh, trees and yeah, it's a custom plus cyber, uh, kind of evergreen forest tree in Okinawa. So it's a uh, kind of tropical region. And uh, coming to a little bit northern in Yakushima, in uh, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Nature Forest. It's a Japanese cedar around and uh, set to be around 3,000 years, maybe around only around 1,500 years, but still a very big trees with certain made of surroundings, it's a, a cedar forest, a very famous cedar forest area. So it's called the warm temperate region. And then uh, coming to the north in Kyoto area or even so in our Kanto area, it's a uh, kind of uh, uh, evergreen uh, forest areas. So it's uh, called rural forest, rural forest area. And this kind of rural forest is evergreen, so it doesn't grow up the leaves. So it's a very dark forest, and people uh, nowadays don't like this kind of evergreen forest or are not used to. So they are only found near old temples or shrines. So it's a very rare area. In Tokyo, you can go to um, Kawasaki area, there's some kind of heritage forest where they keep this kind of evergreen rural forest. Area, but nowadays most of the forests found in Japan, uh, near Kanto or in Tokyo area, secondary forests is uh, dominated with oak trees. Then I am coming also to the uh, northern area and uh, to some higher alti altitude. There are the evergreen coniferous forests, so there are the uh, needle trees, and also the like Kumano in also our UNESCO heritage uh, for. Kind of scenery and natural uh, worship. So they are uh, the natural worship for uh, for very ancient times and back and uh, kind of uh, uh, yeah, forest in upper areas and in the higher areas they come the coniferous forest. Then uh, you may also know the uh, news national. Um, UNESCO 
world heritage of uh, culture, actually, it's a refugee, as with the surrounding nations. With the uh, evergreen and coniferous forest again, for higher altitudes, altitudes with a cool temperature regions. So it's a uh, sub-alpine region around uh, Fuji. Then, going much more to the northern part, then we have the uh, deciduous forest. We are much more used to the deciduous forest, so the coloring in the olden times. We are even here in Kanto, we are used to this coloring, but in the natural uh, ecosystem, they are much more to the northern part. They are around Akita or in the higher altitudes. So it's a bug uh, forest for uh, also a UNESCO natural heritage. Going uh, to the last slide of the ecosystems, it will be Hokkaido, it's a uh, bush forest, Alpina area in Shiretoko, and it's very low uh, kind of needle trees, also evergreen bush type. So you can see that actually in Japan, from tropics to the Alpina, a very diverse forest covering most of the area of Japan. And now I emphasize that you have uh, in Japan a lot of forests, but it was not so from, from the long, from the distance. This shows some uh, in Edo period some, uh, some drawings from the 53 station at Hokkaido. You may have seen this kind of picture before. And nowadays there are um, forest scientists who analyze the pictures from forestry. And then we say, just see uh, people uh, traveling from Tokyo to uh, Kyoto, but they analyze the trees here, this kind of trees. So they are actually uh, mostly pine trees, so matsu. And they are very small. So it's not because the uh, painter are very lazy to draw trees. But actually, there were no trees in those areas. There's kind of a lot of analysis about old picture. It is now showing also near the uh, Fuji area. So here, maybe some forest in the mountain sides, but these are paddy fields, and below the, along the street, there are no trees here. So it's actually showing that people are cutting a lot of trees in the ancient times. So there are, um, and a lot of analysis recently to do. And the reason for this kind of uh, no trees everywhere in Japan is the use of uh, the, uh, wood as uh, fuel. These are um, a simple calculation how much people use wood in the ancient times. So, uh, one of the military fires and uh, oh, uh, so this one, so this one. So people in the ancient times, they had around, um, uh, for one rice field, they used, its uh, unit is usually is 10 R. 10 R is 10 meter to 100 meter. This one, they uh, need it as a fertilizer, 15 to 35 uh, Da. Da is, which can uh, carry one horse. So it's a, uh, some, some strange unit, but it's called a Da. And for rice wheat, it requires this amount for upland uh, 15. And one duck can be uh, gathered from 5 to 6 R, for this R is 10 meter per 10 meter U. So to maintain 10 uh, R of diet rice wheat, you need uh, 75 to 210 uh, uh, R of forest. And to maintain upland area for 10 R, it requires 75 to 19 R of forest. So for, uh, and for fuel, you need for 25 R da, which is required for one household for one year, and 125-150 R of forest. Just this uh, calculation from the ancient histories. And then, uh, calculating for example for eight-head family. So in ancient times, maybe the farms, uh, family units are bigger. So uh, then, just calculating how much they eat rice. So one goku is also an old unit, so it's uh, around 1,000 go, and 1,000 go is 150 gram, it's around one unit which you previously eat for one day. So then 150 kilogram per head per year is required, and for one eight head family, it requires 1,000 uh, kilogram per family per year. That means, sorry, it's getting uh, quite uh, uh, 
using the plus and x, but then for right speed, usually we use 400 kilogram per ten hour per year. Then it needs at least 30 hour per hour when this one by this 400. Using this arm in the previous slide, and, uh, for maintaining a family, you need 30 hours of rice field and 225 to 630 hours of forest. So it needs, needs a lot of more forest than in the field, actually, agricultural field. So in the previous times, the forest and agricultural field was not separated. They gathered litter and wood from the forest and put it in the field, the fertilizer. Then in the fertilized field, they have the rice cultivation, they eat, they put the money again to the field again, so this kind of process. But the forest was included in the cycle and was a lot of area was cut for fuel and additionally feeding the agricultural field for nutrients. And that one is the reason for the big and for the uh, cutting of the forest in the previous time. So this one is a very brave uh, calculation for the surface area of Japan from uh, BC 0 to um, AD 2000. And you can see that this one is a natural forest. Natural forest decreased due to the uh, increase of farmland. And after urbanization happened, then the decline uh, are much more during 1,000 to 1,500 um, year. So it does mean that in these times, people cut the trees in the, for in the forest without replanting again. So replanting actually started much later. So uh, yeah, for charcoal use and then replanting much more later here. In the recent days, there are a lot of replanting, but not in the past. That meaning that that kind of forest use lead to this kind of um, low density forest because they are just cutting for fuel and for agricultural use without recovery. So that one, uh, of course, in the mountainous side, the remote area means it's a very dense forest, natural um, primary forest. But near the cities, near the road, there are a lot of uh, very scarce so then, let's go to much more to the recent years. And nowadays, there are a lot of planting of trees. Especially after the World War II, the need for forests or for wood was very high. And so they planted a lot of areas of 4, 4 million hectares per year. They planted around 4 million or 3 million hectares per year. But recently, after the 1970s, the area of recapping decreased, and nowadays there are only 240 or uh, 100,000 uh, hectares reclaimed per year. So the decline is very large. So one reason is, of course, that they have reclaimed all the bare area. So there are no more area to reclaim again. This so is, of course, one reason. But another reason is of uh, the change of views. So the replanted area is nowadays around 40% of the forest, and called um, the bracket natural forest, around 60%. From this replanted forest, most of the area, so around 80%, are uh, coniferous trees, so needle trees, for uh, good, for uh, producing for good. The most part of the Japanese cedar, so sugi, and cypress, hinoki, and uh, lag, these are karamats mostly in Hokkaido. So these are almost most of the part uh, planted as coniferous forests. So these are a monoculture forests, mostly for this replanted area. And then the use is actually uh, um, quite because they planted in the 50s to 70s, 1970s, a lot of forests, a lot of uh, coniferous forests, but uh, they didn't harvest it. So they are just growing now to the mountain. 